Welcome to Hashtag Fish, the channel where we teach and share the science behind shrimp and fish farming. In this video, I'll talk about how we assess the health status of shrimp larvae and how we can ensure the quality of a PL. I'll explain about some simple tests which can help to distinguish between a good and a bad batch before taking to your farm. I'm Gianna Gomez and I'm passionate about aquaculture and aquatic animals. The success of a shrimp production on farms really starts with good quality and healthy post larvae. For this reason, having a critical and systematic way to evaluate the quality of health PLs in the hatchery can help farmers to start the production with great advantage. And this is because the best way to manage anything is by measuring. But how is it possible to check the health of a tiny shrimp at the post larval stage? Well, there are several simple but very effective techniques for estimating the baseline health of PLs. For some of the tests, you need a dissecting microscope. The first and probably the most adopted PL assessment in hatcheries globally is what we call stress test. The purpose of this test is to determine how strong and adapted PLs are to go through the transportation period and acclimation process at the farm. So how do you perform this test? Randomly, 100 PLs are selected from a tank and placed in small containers or a beaker with the chlorinated fresh water for 30 minutes, but keeping the same temperature as the original tanks. At the later PL stage, they could be already acclimatized to a lower salinity that is closer to that of the farm they are going to. But by exposing them to a salinity of zero, it is possible to observe how the PLs respond and react to this drastic change in water conditions. During the test, you can stir the water gently by applying a circular motion. The PL should swim against the current and not just be let carried by the current. Even in fresh water, a strong PL should be active. At the end of this 30 minutes, the PLs are then moved back to another container with the original water they were before the test where they will stay for observations for another 30 minutes and then the survival is counted. If the PLs had just molted, for instance, and are soft and delicate, they most likely will die with the test. If this happens, it means they are not ready for the stress of being transported and acclimated to the conditions of the farm. Ideally, all PLs should survive. If less than 85% of the PLs survive, this would indicate that animals are not strong enough to go through acclimation. This test is certainly not sufficient to determine the quality of shrimp post larvae, so let's keep going on. After PLs are counted, they should be measured. This could be done while we are waiting for the 30 minutes of recovery from the previous test. For this, we can use a simple ruler or even better, a laminated millimetric paper. In this test, we measure how many millimeters each PL have. This test shows not only if they are too small for their age, but also will show if there are too many variable size within the same batch. Different size early on could indicate that there was not sufficient feed or that the feed was not distributed evenly in the larval tanks, or even be the consequences of some disease which promote uneven growth in the population. Large different size early on in the culture is a problem which will just get worse over the course of the grow out phase, because the bigger shrimp will not let the smaller ones to access the food, or will just prey on them, reducing the overall survival. For a PL10, for example, ideally more than 80% of the animals are in three size classes and we don't want more than four size classes in the same batch. The next test is the assessment of post larvae weight or PL gram assessment. So in this test, we weight somewhere between half a gram or one gram of PLs and manually count them. For this test, we need to have an accurate scale. We then calculate how many PLs we have per gram. A PL8 of Lithopenus vanamei, for example, is expected to have around 650 PLs per gram if animals are healthy. These numbers will change for other shrimp species and can also change from hatchery to hatchery. What is important is to have a baseline measurement to assess the quality of post larvae over time and from batch to batch. This way, you will build up your own database 
and it will be easier to identify a problematic patch before you purchase and before you stock your pumps. But probably the most important part of the post larvae quality assurance should focus on the overall health assessment of animals. This assessment is based on the wet mount technique, where we basically place the PLs on a glass slide and observe them under the microscope. As PLs are very small, the dissection of animals needs to be done very carefully. Usually, around 50 animals per batch observed under the microscope can give us a very good idea of how healthy they are. When some of the parameters checked are far out of what they should be, the test should be repeated with a greater number of PLs to confirm it. Some of the criteria used to estimate the healthy status of PLs are based on external parameters, such as deformity and necrosis of larvae, which can indicate, for example, if animals have been eating well, if there was cannibalism, which again means that there was not enough feed in the tanks, or the presence of toxins in the water. The presence of filamentous bacteria or protozoa are also some external parameters to be observed and linked to the quality of the water in tanks. We should look at each part of the PL, as explained in the first video of the shrimp series, and mark where each of these problems were found in the PL body. For each of these parameters, there is a scale or a value of what should be considered a normal or not. As an example, for Lithopenus vaname PL, less than 5% of animals should have external deformity, less than 20% should have mild necrosis, and no more than 10% should show signs of severe necrosis. Internally, what we should carefully assess is the health of the hepatopancreas. The hepatopancreas is one of the most important organs of shrimps, as it is here where the digestive process occurs, including absorption of nutrients and production of enzymes. So abnormalities in this organ can be an indication that PLs are not healthy. Here, we assess the level of deformity in hepatopancreas tubules, which normally have the shape of fingers and the level of lipids or oil droplets in these organs, which can indicate if animals have been eating or not. For deformity, we can give a score from 1, 2 or 3, the worse it gets, or a 0 if there is no deformity. For lipids, we also can give a score of 1, 2 or 3, the more lipids they have. As an example, we can observe a damage 1 in Lithopenus vaname PL, which should be acceptable in the batch if it is below 30% of the total animals check. On the other hand, a damage 3, for example, should be unacceptable. Lipids levels should be between 2.5 and 3 for a health animal that have been well fed and are ready for the transport and stocking. If you are interested in knowing exactly how to determine these numbers, leave a comment below and we'll create a video with details about this assessment and some publications available. The same way the quality of hepatopancreas is assessed, it is possible to check the gills of PLs, as they need this organ to breathe in the water. In the gills, it is important to determine the minimum acceptable number of necrosis and filamentous bacteria, similarly to the external parameters. The same way the intestines of PLs are checked for any deformities. Another important assessment of PLs quality is their development according to their age estimated by the development of their gills. Depending on the PL's age, there is a number expected of filaments to observe if animals are healthy. So for example, for a PL8 of Lithopenus vaname, three filaments should be observed. If the number of gill filaments is below the expected number of filaments for that age, the animal is underdeveloped. This could indicate that something could have gone wrong with that particular batch. Transporting and releasing PLs in a new environment where they don't have their gills fully developed to properly perform the gas exchange, that is, to take up oxygen and release CO2, can result in mortalities in the first hours or in the first days after stocking. The gills are also a very important organ used for, by PLs for osmoregulation which is to adjust and maintain the concentration of their hemolymph or blood stable. 
If the gills are not yet fully developed to cope with the difference in salinity in the new environment, at the farm they may not survive after stocking. It is very important to clarify some points here about PL's wet mouth health check. This is not a disease diagnostic test. These assessments are used to give us baseline information about the health of PLs because it is only possible to identify what is abnormal if you understand what is normal. So when abnormal observations are spotted, it will be possible to implement a more detailed assessment of animals and if needed, send them for traditional diagnostic tests such as PCR or histopathology to ensure there are no specific pathogens causing the problems. It is also important to train a couple of people on how to perform this test and they will get better and faster with time. Once you know what to expect in a healthy PL, it will be effortless or clear to identify if something is wrong with animals. And in this case, it will be better not to use them to start your production. One thing that I can say is that implementing PL health checks before stocking them in ponds can be the main difference between the success or failure of shrimp production. In this video, I talk about one of the most important practices for hatcheries and shrimp farms, which is how to check the health status of PLs. I explain why this practice is so important, how to check for a good quality post larvae and what tests to perform in the hatchery before buying PLs. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, please like and subscribe to our channel and share this video with people interested in learning more about aquaculture. Thank you and see you next time.